Okay, we are here one on one, Record School one on one, and uh, I have Leandra Grant with me. And uh, hi, Leandra, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm okay. Leandra is a good friend, uh, a fellow teacher, and also she was um, gracious enough to lend her talents to star in the short film 929 Live Life. Uh, so we appreciate that. And I just wanted to chat with you today about your thoughts on education, music, culture, that kind of stuff. Uh, first of all, have you, how have you been? How are you now that the weather is nice and the, the world is opening up? Um, I'm definitely feeling better um, with the weather getting you know, better. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really nice to see things starting to open up again, to see people starting to be more out and about and having more opportunities to connect, you know, in real life with friends and, you know, finally start to feel like we're getting slowly getting back to, uh, to real life. It's a little weird. I feel like I've forgotten kind of how to like be a person out right. in the world, but right, it's right, nice. Right start to uh you know sort of have to shake off those you know dust off those people's yeah. skills again and you go for, you go for walks right you don't or are you are you a biker or a, i'm trying to remember our conversation in terms of our outdoor recreations i'm yeah i'm definitely more of a walker um so yeah i've been going for walks i found a well a friend took me actually to a really cool trail kind of near my house where you mm -hmm. can feed birds and see deer and stuff like that so nice. it was really nice. nice to kind of actually have some connection with nature too and you know just be able to enjoy life again yeah and that that's it's so therapeutic so that's that's good yeah. i'm kind of the same way like as much as time as i can spend outside that's what i do for sure uh let's back up and then we'll come you know to the present so thanks again for being in the short film um yeah yeah did you did you enjoy it like your thoughts back on it, like in terms of the performance and also the issues that are that it was connected with. Have you had a chance to think about it or? Absolutely. And I yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, just sort of being back in that environment of creativity and and you know, creating content was really nice for me. And I, I almost didn't even realize how much I missed it. So that was really nice to sort of participate in something like that again. And yeah, I think it really, in terms of reflecting on the issues that the video was sort of covering, I think it was almost sort of cathartic or therapeutic in a way to also feel like we are talking about these issues, putting something out into the world that will generate conversation and maybe some kind of awareness, but also doing it in a way that I feel was really responsible because it wasn't strictly you know sort of trauma informed it was more yeah. also about like celebration and joy and 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 music and dance and all of these things that are also speaking so of dance very <laughs> 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 to cut you Not off my dancing no but... no no yours and, uh, <laughs> you know that was some of the the highlights in terms of the feedback was the dancing so <laughs> hey hey thanks for lending those moves Somehow I feel like the cute little girl was the one getting more of the uh, dancing oh, well, cute me, little but girl. They always get credit, but yours was was equally appreciated. <laughs> so thank you. So that's cool. In terms of getting into the space of content creation, do you have any more content that you were inspired to create or 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 spend more time thinking about that stuff? I mean, I'm always kicking around ideas and and writing them down and and thinking about putting them into practice, but I think I am definitely going to work more on actioning them. So whether it be through writing or maybe even doing some more things like this, like one-on-one -on -one interviews just on you know various topics, that's always been something I enjoyed as well. So yeah, the video was also sort of a way for me to realize how much I missed that and hopefully you know be able to create some content of my own going forward cool cool i was going to ask you what are you reading and i know every time you and i talk about reading it's really interesting in terms <laughs> of the stuff that you read and how quickly you read it but let's talk about writing because i know you you have a writing background so yeah what do you have in in, in mind well right now oh, what no. i would really like to get back into doing is more creative writing um because a lot of the writing i've done in the last few years has been more corporate communication you know journalism type of pieces and i really want to sort of try my hand again at creative writing so poetry maybe trying to kick out a novel myself nice, nice. read so <laughs> that yeah that's that's what i would like to get back into that's that's exciting to me. I I enjoy writing as well. I 
I, I write as much as I can, but I find I'm quite slow at it and managing my time and is, is a little bit difficult for me, but that's just the way it is for me. So I'm always excited by people who can actually write at a good pace and they're, they're putting things out. Uh, that's what I'm like. So I'm excited for you. And it's I mostly- hope, I hope I'm able to do that. Oh, you, are, you, are, you are, of course, why not? You are, you, 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 you work fast, you think fast, you could do it. Especially, uh, I'm gonna share with you a friend of mine named Allison Isaac. She just put out a, um, a children's book called Kukumba and uh, yeah I'll show it to you it's around somewhere and um, it's pretty exciting she self-published it and I'm like amazing you know because I I had this idea for a children's book um, it was um, kind of based on the idea of Kwanzaa Christmas and sharing holidays through cookies right um, and I think I wrote down a couple pages of ideas but that was yeah. months and months and months ago because uh, it's you know, the ideas come, but then actioning them, like you said, that's where the time and the discipline and the management comes into play. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's way, way, way in the back burner for me. Yeah. So Can people, yeah, yeah, so, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. I was just saying people that I sp speak to who are further on in that process or have executed, I feel really excited for them. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. That I, you actually just remind me, I actually wrote a children's book like yes. a couple of years ago. Yeah, I knew you have it in you. That's why, <laughs> that's why I, you know, I talked up, talked you up about that. And I'm so, I was so excited because I actually finished it. Like I actually wrote it and finished it, but I was using my terrible like dinosaur of a MacBook computer mm. and saved the file on that. And I have to try and find a way to bring it back to life to get the story off of that hard drive so that I could actually try to do something with it. Because that's like the one piece I've finished in a room. Mm. Or what about just starting over? I guess it's I on you. I, I, that would also be enough. You know why? I know why I say that because, okay, you know, the idea of like, okay, reviving the Mac. Mm -hmm. Is that are you, is that kind of uh, low key procrastination? In a way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is right there. The computer's there. The charger's there. It could happen, but yeah, I'm always like, I'll get to that. But yeah, you're right. You're right. It's probably low key procrastination. Well, hey, you know, I'm just I'm just messing with you, you know, because the, the more the more stuff I see from my peers who can create, the the happier I feel. The more energized I feel. For sure. That's all. I'm just you know I'm just pushing you. What are you reading these days? You are, let, let, let's actually, you know what? Let's, um, let's set it up mm -hmm. because you and I met in March, I believe, yes. as teachers, teacher colleagues, and congratulations on finishing Teachers College, by the way. Thank You're officially you. done, <laughs> right? Officially? Sorry, what did you say? You're officially done? I am officially done. Wow, yeah. that's good. Did you do the math test? Not yet. That's uh, still in that. I'm supposed to write that in a couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, highly stressed out about it, but you know. I've heard. I've heard that you know, the study process is stressful, but people are being successful. People are pushing through. Yeah. The yeah. mutual colleagues of ours have, have been successful. So, <laughs> I um. Do you have a, Do you have like a support uh, team to help you with the answers or the questions or the approach? Um, there's a there's a few groups like online that I've come across where people are sharing resources and a friend of mine are writing it fairly close together. So we're kind of trying to support each other with study materials and and strategies and things that we hear and whatnot. So yeah, it's it's definitely sort of created like a community amongst cool. the candidates to sort cool. of band together and, and just for <laughs> clarity, yeah, this is the the new math test that all teacher candidates who graduate teacher's college in Ontario have to take, not Canada, just Ontario. Ontario, yes. Okay, okay, you guys are gonna, gonna kill it. And even if you were gonna teach something that's far removed from math, you have to take this test. Yes, that is true. <laughs> <Tag> English teacher is. <laughs> that's funny, that's funny, you'll, you'll be fine. Not to be cavalier, but you know, I'm just, I'm in a positive space. Um, but yeah, in our English discussions, it was, it was nice to hear about your reading because you, are um, an avid reader and you you read fantasy and all kinds of things really really quickly I and do. ferocious and, and, and ferociously yes i do so what are you reading uh these days so i'm 
sort of between books right now. I just finished uh, a novel called The Other Black Girl. It's by an author named Zakia Delilah Harris, I believe. Um, and it's sort of a, it's not a fantasy, it's a sort of thriller novel. The way it was being advertised was like a, um, you know, publishing industry meets get out, uh, you know, with black women sort of that. Oh, wow. Out. Can you say that once? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. The publishing industry meets get out. Yes. Yes, because it's about black women working in the publishing industry, um, you know, which has historically been very white. Yeah. And, you know, a bit of the sort of supernatural horror kind of creeps in in terms of, you know, what's scarier, the prospect of, you know, living as a black person with all of the sort of physical and mental perils and trauma that can come that that can come with or shedding your black identity to be able to fit in to white spaces and move through the world. So it's it, it sort of takes that question and puts it into, um, you know, a modern day work environment. And it, it, it was interesting. It was definitely an interesting read. What a what a, a realistic set of questions. <laughs> right right let me see if i heard you properly the second one was shedding your black identity to fit into like a predominantly white space and the first question was what the first, the first was living as a black person fully in your black identity and um, living with sort of the trauma and the the perils that that can come with oh interesting did you find did you find it realistic and were you happy with how it turned out Yes and no. Like, I think I got a little bit too attached to the, the sort of, you know, thriller horror aspect of it. And that was more low key. That was more of a slow burn. Um, right. Because I finished another book fairly recently with a, which they also compared to Get Out. And that sort of leaned in more to the, the, the scary um, wow. aspect of the plot. What was that book? That it was called uh, One of the Good Ones. And the author is Malika Masoufde, I believe is her name. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, that was a YA young adult novel, but it was excellent, excellent, highly recommend it. Um, and that one, as I said, sort of leaned more into the thriller, the, 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 the horror um, of the premise, whereas this one was a bit more real world. Um, mm -hmm. So it was kind of two different approaches to a similar idea um so i was i found sort of the the creepiness factor the thriller factor a bit lacking in this novel but i did think that the premise and the ideas that it was putting out there were really were really interesting nice do you do book talks i don't I okay don't. are you familiar with them pardon are you familiar with them yes, yes. yeah yeah so you should number one um, I was going to ask you about your reading process. Like, when do you read? Do you read in the morning? Because I, I read, but I, I'm a, I'm a pretty sloppy reader. Mm -hmm. So I have, I always, you know, pick up one book, and I have a couple books going, and um, I read a little bit here, a little bit there, kind of thing. And I always admire people who can just grab something, focus, and finish it. Uh, number one. So I'm curious about your process, but number two. Um, with the book talks, I'm thinking about students mm -hmm. and you probably have a pretty, well, you definitely have the potential to put out a lot of cool stuff. So specifically, there's a group of teachers now, you know, us in our digital space, it started last spring. Are you, they use this program called Flipgrid. You okay. Know Flipgrid? Yeah. Where people record videos and a, a bunch of um, forward thinking English teachers recorded book talks. Um, so that students could watch the book talks and get a sense of what the books are about and then choose them on the virtual library. Oh. And it's a shared platform. Um, so it's kind of like a group. Um, I'm a member of it. And I don't know, you might need a TDSB login and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I'll send you a link. And I think, because I'm thinking that would be, it's a good collection to have. You have these books. And book talks are really important, especially now recorded ones. And I think it, it, it would also give you a chance for students to kind of get to know you and for you to like, you were talking about creating content, right? Yes. 
cool thing. And then the third thing I'm thinking is I can also repost them on my site and then, hey. <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, yeah, because the two books you, you mentioned sound pretty interesting. I've never heard of them before. I'm assuming they're pretty new. Yes, they both were released. One of the good ones was released last year and the other Black Girl came out literally maybe two weeks ago. So very new. Nice. So what's your reading um, regimen or like your habits? Do you just buy books, order them on Amazon? Do you go to the bookstore and then you read books in the morning? You read them really fast? You read them, it takes two days to read. What's your reading regimen? Um, so it sort of det- it sort of depends on how much time I have. Um, mm. But I do always try to make some time for reading. Good for um, you. Not every day, but then most days. Um, you know, with the pandemic going on, uh, you know, I have mostly been ordering my books uh, online or downloading them digitally. Yeah. Uh, but my Ooh, friend, digital download, man, really? I know, but I, <laughs> I know. Never, never, never. I, I, feel, I feel sorry for my students who have to do that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, if you have to read on like a computer screen, yeah, I, I don't think I could do that. But I have an e-reader, which mm-hmm. I, I don't mind reading on those. It's two o'clock. When I do have to do, oh, who is that? Oh, that's my <laughs> the old <laughs> MacBook Pros have this computer voice that you, if you don't forget to turn off the thing, It'll then the that. little the man says it's two o'clock. I never did that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but my, my first choice is always to go to the bookstore. That's actually one of my favorite things to do is just take a trip to the bookstore and kind of yeah. Grab- ruse sometimes I have books specifically in mind that I want to buy sometimes I don't and I just buy whatever speaks to me um and yeah I usually tend to buy more than one at once because I like to know I like to know that I have something to read at any moment if I don't have a book to reach for it it gives me anxiety so I usually (laughs) will buy Mm -hmm. more than one um and yeah I sometimes I read before bed um that's usually you know the time that I will sort of say okay this is reading time even if it's just five minutes before I fall asleep but usually if I'm into the story and I have time I will sit and just spend my day reading if I if I have it at my disposal you better like hold on to those days because (laughs) God willing September (laughs) your days are gonna be full man uh, yeah I know they're 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 on on borrowed time at this point yeah 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 I have them a couple of reading things a more reading things. Have you read Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead? I have not. Did we talk I, about it? That's cool. No, we didn't talk about it. I don't think. I don't think so. Strange. Why didn't I mention that? Yeah, man. Have you heard of it? I have. I actually have the book in my house. I just haven't read it. Yet. <laughs> yeah, cool. Because then read it, and then we can talk about it. Okay. And then we can then we can talk about um the the show. There's right? a. Oh, yeah i have like so this is wow. like i read magazines right i read vanity Fair sometimes okay. so this one is this one's interesting because it, you know talks a little bit about megan and the, the royal family but it has an interview with barry jenkins oh okay okay yeah okay. that's right because you know talk about him making the underground railroad tv show and when i was putting my mind putting my ideas together for the film i was watching a lot of barry jenkins interviews and i was like mm-hmm. ooh. <laughs> basically I was pretending to be very nice. so uh yeah um I'll share is it egotistical of me to share what I'm reading oh please please do okay I'm gonna I'm gonna go deep because I'm in my home office I got a bunch of crap this is really cool fast company yeah but this is the issue focusing on well it's kind of cool the world's most innovative companies and it talks about um Spring Hill so the bronze company okay uh and pardon not familiar with Spring Hill what do they do so are you have you seen any of have you seen that show the shop or any of the LeBron James kind of stuff no no okay basically Spring Hill is a media company media production company so what they do is everything from like smaller commercials which is now called branded content Mm -hmm. so that's the new that's the term where if you were going to shoot a video uh for a brand whether it's Nike or a different book list or something like that. Dove, for example, um, you would shoot a cool video, um, maybe an interview like this. Hey, hey, girl, what's your uh, 
skincare regimen, like, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? As opposed to the traditional commercial for Dove on a TV station. Okay. Right. Uh, and the way that's working is the entertainment advertising world is shifting to hire cool people mm -hmm. to shoot content as opposed to a traditional, traditionally made um, commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, another thing, another thing that they do, and this is kind of what I'm trying to do as well, is they partnered up with, um, let's say Bank of America yeah. to, to create videos about financial literacy. Oh, okay. Right. So it's like you, so companies like this are um, collaborating with other brands mm -hmm. to do a couple things, to bring new customers to those brands, but in a way that's beneficial to the customer. Okay. So um, the, the, the financial literacy show that they created is called Dead Presidents. Okay. And there's an interview, there's a section in the interview where uh, LeBron's partner Maverick Carter was like they didn't want to use that title they wanted to use like some corny title okay. and they're like no the title is connected to the culture because we're going to have the Jay-Z song and blah, blah blah and there was a dispute long story short they created a show about financial literacy with a, with a mostly black focus and black audience uh, and then a few, so they also have their most famous show is called The Shop okay where it's like a filmed barbershop setting with a bunch of different celebrities and creatives talking about different issues. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I've seen clips from that. Correct. And then um, the, the larger thing that they've done is the, the Space Jam movie, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's kind of LeBron's company. <laughs> so <laughs> I found that really, really inspiring, right? And then here's something that's kind of cool, if I can be quick about it um there are these twins i think they're from toronto actually and they're like you you, you reacted to the space jam movie are you have you seen it are you excited i haven't seen it yet but i i love the original space jam so uh, I, I will go watch this one even though i'm you know i have some trepidation but i'll i'll watch it what's the trepidation about you know, just remakes and new things uh -huh. and the classics being disturbed. But that's what I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> sure. I'll give it a chance. Good for you. Um, look at these cool stylish guys. Okay. And you said they're from Toronto? I think so. Let me read it. Their brand is called, yes, Goody. Canadian designers, hey, and twins. Byron and Dexter Pertz sold their fashion brand want less essentials in 2018 to launch Goody, a global marketplace focused on sustainability, sustainability and social justice. Well, that's kind of vague, but whatever. The e-commerce <laughs> site sells everything from baskets woven by um, Guinean uh, artisans to eco-friendly Spanish wallpapers. Oh. Right? Uh, with particular focus on elevation, elevating Asian and African mar um, markers. That sounds cool. Yeah, so this is uh, something I've been reading. And um, so check this out. This is a book. It's mostly about like the history of Africa in terms of colonialism. Okay. But I read so slowly because there's always crap going on, you know? Um, but I should be done this. Called, yeah, so this is cool. This is actually a, it's from a Canadian publisher. Okay called House of Anansi. Have you heard of it? Oh, House of Anansi Press, yeah. You've heard of it, right? Yeah, so they put these out. There's another really good one um, called On Being Muslim. Um, you, know, you know, just one, one more. I started reading Obama's book, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I find, it, I find it inspiring. I like, like, he's a politician who has to do, who has done a lot of immoral things obviously as the president of the united states right so not excusing that at all but just also his two things that i found inspiring were he talks about his unique the uniqueness of his upbringing and how he found himself a lot of times being an outsider right. and how he managed that and the part of that is like when he got into harvard and he kind of clicked into a very disciplined regimen of self-improvement. So like you locking him in and being really into studying law. So like, you know, just throwing themselves into books and also self-improvement and like the, 
the um, I'm inspired by how he, I guess, a combination of the work ethic and just the the achievement side of him that he, you know, has them that had to go into him. So that's kind of cool. For sure. And then the last one. I don't think anyone could take a, take that away from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is kind of cool. Um, I don't know if we, I talked to you about like my interest in African history and Egyptian history and ancient African history and all that kind of stuff. I kind of gleaned the African history because you had given me that encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. But I didn't know about like sort of the Egyptian mythology or I, that. I, I try and go as deep as I can. So my my one of my tricks is this is from Value Village and this costs six bucks. Oh, nice. Yes. So whenever I go to Value Village, they always have tons of books on ancient Egypt and sometimes other parts of history that I'm interested in, African history. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of cool. That's kind of like it complements digging for records, you know, like <laughs> you for like, you know, really good ancient African history books. Stories. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are you listening to lately? Um, so I just recently discovered this singer named uh, Fanna Hughes, I believe is Ooh. how you pronounce her name. That's cool. And I really like her vibe. It's very interesting. It's like a alt R&B kind of sound. But when I listen to her, it sounds very cinematic to me. And I, I feel like listening to her music, I could see it used in film you know when I'm like creating scenes in my head as I'm listening to it so nice. I really enjoy that um how do you spell the name f-a-n-n-a-h nope it's f-a-n-a -A, right. and that last name h-u-e-s how do you discover her uh just I don't remember what I was listening to on Spotify and then when I scroll down they give you know suggested artists or you may also like and I just liked the photo of her that they mm -hmm. used. I was like, oh, this girl's beautiful. This is a beautiful image. And so I clicked on it, listened to the first track, and I was like, okay, I'm into this. Like, I want to hear more. Mm, nice. Yeah. That works like a charm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. you know, Spotify's, really, <laughs> Spotify's really, really good for that. My wife yeah. has the most amazing songs sent to her on Spotify. Every really? week. We're like, what is that? And some of our favorite artists now, like, Sorry to, you know, digress. Have you heard of Salt, S-A-U-L-T? No. It's, it's pretty dope. Came out last year. It's this collection of producers and R&B and, and, um, singers from England. And okay. they put out, like, mostly, like, Black Power, Black Lives Matter themed content. Cool. And the first one is, the first album is called Untitled. I, I say it's the best album of 2020. S-A-U-L-T. S-A-U-L-T, okay. So, and then she, so she just found Salt from Spotify Center. Then there's this new artist um, named Aya from France that Spotify Center, Aya Nakamura. It's all French music. Well, it's all, it's like R&B, but it's all French. Okay. It's so good. And I'm like, cause, cause I, I, I use Tidal mostly. Oh, okay. Uh, Title does not send music. It's just like they, 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 I don't know, they have their, their newest stuff, but I find the Spotify weekly lists are always so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed that with Title too, like when I had it, they would send you, you know, when new things came out, but mm -hmm. it was just from their big, you know, maybe it was Jay-Z, Nicki Minaj, like the big names that you would yeah. already know, whereas Spotify, yeah, I think kind of pushes more of the independent, you know. Yes. Yeah, it's like, whoa, we, every week, boom, 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 boom. It's, um, you know, suggestion. I got my suggested new albums, but I don't want, why are they sending me Kodak Black's new album? I have, <laughs> right? I have no interest, nothing. So, your album, what else did you listen to? <laughs> not even, you know what's funny? I've been listening to, this week, I'm listening to Parliament Funkadelic. Okay. And I've been listening to Division for the past two days. I was going to bring that up to you. And then, yeah, nothing anywhere close to Kodak Black. Remotely near Kodak. Does <laughs> maybe have like a remix with Kodak Black? No, 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 not even, nothing. And then there's this, oh, you, you'll like this. There's this Brazilian group that I found from a Tiny Desk concert. Tiny Desk. There's an Afropunk version. Okay. Random. But we're like, let's check it. So they're called, you like them. They're called Luna Luigi. Actually, I also listen to the new J. Cole. 
Both we'll have dreads, but about. they're not nothing new, nothing by Kodak Black. So that's good. <laughs> thank you. Well, you see Jada, uh, Jada, well, J. Cole, doesn't he reference Kodak Black on a song? So maybe there's like a algorithmic Absolutely. data no, connection. No, 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 no <laughs> not at all. Uh, sorry, so the, the Brazilian stuff I listen to is called um, Luigi Luna. How do you spell that? L U E B. J I, that's Lu G. Okay. And Luna, L U N A. Okay, cool. It's kind of lovely, jazzy Bossa Nova style. Ooh, I'm into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I would suggest you start with the Tiny Death concert. Okay. Afropunk. Okay, Tiny Death. But uh, I, I interrupted. You're mentioning Hannah Hughes, Lana Hughes. Fanna, F A N A. Fanna Hughes. Fanna, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's, you know, kind of what I've been listening to in terms of new stuff um, lately. I kind of forgot about the J. Cole album, which is terrible. Of Ooh, me. You know, it's funny. I listened to the whole thing because I luckily, I guess it was last week. I just, something clicked and I started exercising again properly. I started running again properly. Yeah. And so I listened to the J. Cole yesterday and start to finish. Mm -hmm. Done. You know, Ooh. That was awesome. good. Good. that's my second time listening to his album on a run too oh yeah yeah okay. so I'm, I'm i'm gonna buy the album i'm gonna buy the vinyl so yeah, yeah. yeah good job. <laughs> where yeah. do you oh no you said you told me where you buy your records from, so. uh, where, where i buy my records from yeah uh i buy them from play the record, play the record. and okay. henry's mostly yeah. i've got a few a little bit online i ordered a, an album online a a week ago no no a month ago and i'm um, still waiting for it yeah. you know you know conway the machine no. um the griselda guys from buffalo they are some dope artists from buffalo uh it's another conversation but they're pretty hot you know it's, it's a, and, and they've been around for about 10 years but now they're getting a lot more buzz and they have a really interesting marketing strategy because, because the music is grimy, right? It kind of sounds like a lot like the 90s, right? That's, that's the best reference, but they do it really well. Um, uh, so they, they put out vinyl, uh, but they put out vinyl in very limited quantities. And their music and their vinyl is now, it's got like this uh, pop culture um, cult status. Okay. And especially cult, what's the word I'm looking for? Like almost like um, prestige. So, right. you know, like people who buy Supreme, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Where as soon as it drops, it gets snatched up. Yeah, the, the hype beast kids. 100%. So they're, 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 their content has that, uh, what's the word? Well, it's, a, it, it's associated with that type of um, demand, right? Okay. So, <laughs> so what they do is they drop albums out and usually they are distributed by this one um, German distribu distribution company called Duke, I think. And it's like, there's a thousand or a couple thousand copies and that's it. Okay. So I ordered this one album by Conway and I, I ordered for like a hundred bucks. I know, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is another story. It's, but it's a pretty dope album, but uh, yeah. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I got some records for you. Um, have you seen this? This is pretty cool. This is not because you mentioned 90s R&B, right? Um, this is one of my best 90s R&B records. This is a, it's a maxi, it's a double 12 inch. Oh. It, it has real love, obviously, and the real love. Oh. But the cool thing is um, I'm going down. Ooh, okay. Okay. Where did you get, where and when did you get that? Oh, I got this long, 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 long time ago. I think I probably got to play the record, but this is a long, long time ago. But I just wanted to get your reaction from this. That's awesome. Um, this is this is a cool one you probably like, because it's R&B, well, it's, it's hip hop, it's rap, but it's got an R&B vibe. Do you remember the song? Is that Functified? Yeah. Yes, yes, I yes. do. I do. <laughs> Barely. Were you alive? No. I was, I think. You yes. were probably really little, but good for you. Good for you. Good for I remember you. Debrat's heyday. Yes, you, yes. I remember yes. she was, I was a huge Mariah Carey fan. And at one point they were like best friends. I don't know if they still are, but they were like besties. Right, I do remember that. I have some Mariah Carey records. 
Oh, you want to see mine? Hold on. Where's oh, nice. Yes, yes. Let me see. Let me see. My Mariah Carey. This was my Christmas gift from one of my siblings. Oh, dope, dope. dope. That's Mariah butterfly. Album. Is, so, oh, there's. Let oh. me see. Do I even know what's on? Like, is that this? My wife. This has me on it and my all. I and want to guess. Roof and all of those guys. Like, this for time. me is one of her best, is probably her best album. So I was. Yeah, Mariah Carey is one of my wife's favorite artists. So I'm going to ask her what she thinks. Because because her, her her late 90s heyday albums are Butterfly and then Rainbow, right? Or yes. Fantasy? Yes. Is it called Rainbow or Fantasy? Rainbow. No, Rainbow is the album. Fantasy the is song. a song from another album, but that was kind of like her breakthrough into that R&B Sound. What album is what album is uh, fantasy on? Fantasy is on. Oh, good question. Don't they all have those titles? Rainbow, fantasy, butterfly. <laughs> those, those <laughs> there words. was a theme for a while. Um, I want is is fantasy on the Dream Lover? Oh, album? Dream, of course. That's another kind of variety <laughs> world. Term. Let me now. I have to check because I feel like a bad fan for not knowing this. And Heartbreaker, isn't it? That's the song with Jay Z. Yes, that's on Rainbow. Uh, daydream daydream is okay <laughs> nice um there's a there's a new school r&b record i want to show you but I'm, I'm gonna stick with the old school because i have some colored vinyl for you oh, yay. did you know that check it out look at this obviously you know. nice. look at that <laughs> okay maybe pretty I'll cool right to my list. <laughs> yes i don't know where you're gonna i don't know if you can find this i'm pretty proud of it like but it was one of those like protected stock i can't find it no anymore. no no not at, all, not at all not at all it's just that i bought it when it came out and i, I don't see it around oh, okay i see oh. atl aliens around and uh i don't know if i see equimini around maybe i and also lately um southern playlist the kind of like music has been reissued and that's around oh, okay I see, yeah i've seen that around i haven't seen this around that much maybe because in my opinion this album is kind of the lower, some of their lower, you know, Stankonia, I think is probably like not one of their top albums. Oh, okay. okay. What do you think? It's not one of, um, I, it's a good yeah, question. I mean, I can't, I haven't listened to a lot of Outkast albums, like from top to bottom. Fair like, enough. Good That's songs, fair. Um, a number of them. But yeah, I feel like the ones that I hear the most buzz about are probably like AT Aliens and Aquamanai and... Yeah, Stankonia is kind of the the underdog, I would the say. The thing is, this album does have like three of their best songs, right? It has Bombs Over Baghdad, So Fresh, So Clean, and then Miss Jackson. Right, it's right. okay. It's okay. Um, yeah, I'd get it for those three, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd get it for Miss Jackson alone. <laughs> Good for you. Do you know Division? Do you listen to Division? I don't Division? listen like extensively but i'm aware of a number of songs you should listen to division extensively yeah extensively yeah. <laughs> yes you should so this is i know like... there's a song that i really like at the moment with snow allegra and it covers um usher's nice and slow it's called yeah. us that's a song by division that i very much enjoy oh cool that's cool isn't she she she's another artist my wife put me on to and uh, yeah, we listened to her music. I think it was one of those Spotify things, right? Yeah. <laughs> Spotify just nailed it. Is that that must be on the new album? Uh, it's on it, it's on whatever the newest division album is. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to. So I. Oh man, I spent a lot of time listening to this one. The first one it was a dope album, and then it's one of those things where I'm like, eh, I don't care about the the second one because I still love the first one. <laughs> and finally. You know, I'm now into the first one really, really, really heavy. I have been a little, sorry, into the second one. Okay. And uh, I want to get that on vinyl too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, the third one's going to, I probably won't start with it until like next year or something, you know, because it's, I'm weird that way. Time with each. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we have this thing where I guess this, this guy named Ricky uh, is one of their management people. Okay. And um, he's from the Remix Project, and I met Ricky because I had a student um, do a co-op project, co-op placement at the Remix Project, and 
Ricky and I became friends. Oh, cool. And um, and that's that's kind of how uh, 1985 from Division also came up through the Remix Project too. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. So long story short, we've never been to a Division concert, but um, we've missed a bunch of them, and it's just like oh, it's so heartbreaking. Yeah. And so yeah. like they have, they they performed quite a bit, right? Yeah, that's the thing. That's why it's so ridiculous. We're yeah. like, oh damn. And I, I technically know one of the people who helps their concerts and stuff. So I could maybe even get an in, right? But the the, the flip side has happened. So a couple of years ago, maybe I don't know, not too long after, like when we when this was a heavy was when this album was in heavy rotation at the house, mm-hmm. we found out that um Division just, you know, happened to do a concert at the, with the, with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh, wow. damn. That hurt, you know? That hurt a lot. Holy and then, amazing. yeah, and then during COVID, they did like four or five concerts as a, a drive-in theater. What? Yeah, see? <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. They did three, then they like added three more. And we found out it. We found out about these concerts at the after after they had finished. Okay, like, hey, yeah, great. This, this was a you know. their marketing team. Like maybe you're not advertising these concerts. Yeah, because <laughs> it's like, I'm a regular person. I follow them online, and I keep like, how am I missing this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and so our mission is to never miss. Make sure we're at the next division concert. Well, because Spotify will also tell you if someone's yeah. performing in your area like if you click the artists like oh i should do that and you scroll down there's usually a thing that'll tell you like oh this person is having a concert soon you know and it'll tell you where and so i've come across a few concerts that way nice i've been able to attend them I don't, but i see it like i see it yeah, yeah, quite yeah. A bit, um yeah. at least you know, pre-covid but do you have anything um in the future concert wise that you are hoping for preparing for um i'm saving my money because i feel like everybody is going to announce a that's tour so smart that's so smart uh, yeah 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 you're smart. that's really smart so you i'm put a little I'm, a pot yeah, right starting like a little concert fund because that's something that you know i probably miss the most like i love going yeah. to concerts so that's um, we should um, do that like a lot of artists that i enjoy are probably going to be releasing music and then going on tour so i want to make sure i'm ready do you think do you think they're gonna stupid question alert do you think the artists are gonna charge exorbitant amounts of money yes yes yeah me too yes (laughs) but i feel like there'll probably be some sort of like hey if you buy in the first two minutes like you'll be oh, able to get oh, special oh special prices yeah, yeah. or something like that god bless yeah. all of us but that's cool that's a really smart thing starting a concert fund yes. Yes. Smart. smart smart last record question how you doing how are you have you have you been enjoying uh, white gold i have been enjoying white gold yes it actually sort of got me listening to or like in like a 70s aesthetic oh, yeah. kind of you know mood so the last few records i've bought have been like 70s era music so actually i just oh, bought cool. yeah and I, I just mentioned the very white love and Un- love unlimited orchestra album called white gold which is one of my favorite albums yes which i put leandra on to now she's part of the club you can be twins yes hold on that's so cool <laughs> yes maybe we can start a movement i love it i love it i love it what are um, some of the other ones you got I just bought this one yesterday. It's an Etta James album called nice. In the Night. Where'd you and, get that from? Pardon? Where'd you I get got that from? Henry's. From where? From, from Henry's? Henry's? Oh, yeah. lucky you. Good. How is he doing? He's doing well. He's doing well. Yeah, I just happened to be in the area yesterday. So I was like, let me pop by and see. I love, it. I love it. I don't know if he's seen the film yet. Did you get to talk about it? Has he seen it? No, no, we didn't get to talk about it because he had another customer that I think he was like, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. it was really well. Yeah, so they were yeah. talking quite a bit um but yeah we we said hello he recognized me hey, uh, that's I, cool. you know my record so that was really nice. Nice. nice um but yeah i picked i picked that up i picked up an oscar peterson record that i haven't had a chance Whoa. to listen to yet it's this one here night train um, very cool i like I'm, I'm i'm a big piano jazz fan me too nice i don't have any oscar peterson 
So that's cool. That's neither cool. do I. So I was like, let me let me pick some up. Um, and yeah, so I just you know I feel like I go there and I just sort of look for whatever is speaking to me at the moment. Sometimes mm. I'll, I'll buy a yes. record based on yes. what the cover looks like. Yes. Oh yeah, big up Henry's <laughs> and surprise. your prices, right? Yeah, exactly. You can't go yeah. wrong. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm gonna let you go soon, uh, but we should talk about education. So yeah. here's a question I thought I thought it would be a good question. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're getting ready to, be, to to start teaching full time, and education is in such a uh, in in flux in so many ways. So, I don't know. Like, what do you what do you think about as you as you get ready to put your you know, put your mind in that direction of like, okay, I'm about to be in a game for real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of strange to think about, I guess, because I feel like, as you said, things are in such flux. So it's kind of like, I don't know what to prepare for in terms of what, you know, schooling is going to look like in September. Are we going to be in person? Are we going to be back virtual? Is it going to be some weird mix of the two? So are you getting the bulletins? Uh, yeah, like I see, I see the email. email that came out yesterday for the TDSB. Yes. Uh, switching to semesters, modified semesters, I think. Yes, I did not see that one, but my mom was talking to me. About okay. <laughs> now, these things are probably going to change, but yeah, that's the latest. Well, and that's, that's the thing, right? They put out, we get these bulletins and these mandates, but then it's like, that's still three months from now. We don't know yeah. what's right. going to happen, right? Um, so I... I guess I've been more trying to prepare for, again, just always trying to establish relationships with students. And I've also Ooh. been really content focused. So starting to think about what do I want to teach? You know, how do I want to, you know, looking at the curriculum, of course, and then seeing how do I want to use the curriculum and teach things that I'm interested in that I think my students will be interested in. Mm -hmm. as well um one of the one of the tricks is um they you know teachers making students excited so if you you know the whole thing if you are interested in it often they become more interested in that right so right. that's why i was like you know, your book talks or your yeah your um this catalog that you have or this collection of really interesting ya books and just books in general that you that you've read and sharing those that's that's one thing you might want to think about yeah, and I'm I'm that's that's something that gets me excited is like because as I'm reading now I'm sort of thinking about the books that I'm reading not just in terms of my own enjoyment but like how could I use this in the classroom or is this something that I could share with my students and get them interested in because uh, something something that I think about all the time you know particularly with teaching English is just there's always those kids who are not excited about reading right that's and right. Just don't have you know. Um, haven't had sort of positive experiences with reading, whether it's through school or at home or what have you. And so those are always the students that I'm thinking about and like, who could this book reach? Who might this story appeal to? Um, so, you know, that's why I read YA because I'm like, I'm working with teenagers. Like I want to pick up that, that teenagers mm -hmm. are, are reading. So, um, so it's, it's, a smart, it's a smart approach. There's, there are a few other teachers that I know. These are also like super English teachers who they make sure they, they're uh, it's true they, they make sure they're up on the ya right yeah. uh where a lot of us will just read you know different things but not necessarily with a focus on make sure i can read and i know what the latest ya stuff is so that's that's pretty that's pretty impressive that you do that so I here's think, a question oh, Sorry, no. Go ahead. no i was just going to say the other thing that's really great about contemporary ya if i can just plug this now too is that when we're talking about especially in education when we're talking about you know bringing diverse voices into the classroom i think that one of the genres that's doing that the best is ya oh like there, yeah that's right there's so much literature coming out of ya that is representative of trans people of black people of people of all ethnicities indigenous writers like all of that is coming out in ya and has been actually correct I have to I have to yeah confirm that from experience. Yeah. There's this book called um, The Secret Life of Rukshana Ali. Mm -hmm. Yeah, am I saying it right? The Secret Life. The, of... I think it is it the I think it's The Life and Lies. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So, full disclosure, I didn't read it. I just ordered it. 
Right. So I'm like, I'll get to it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but my students read it way before I did. Yeah. And I didn't realize that, well, the, I think in the back, you know, it mentions that she is, is gay and um, she has to hide that from her family. Yes. And the thing is, none of my students even batted an eyebrow that read it. Right. And I think it was two boys too. And I was like, oh, it was, just, it was, it was not an issue right. at all. And I'm like, this is a really nice new phenomenon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that I, well, I guess Wally is responsible for. Um, so here, here's a question. If you could kind of design any type of course or courses or learning, anything at all uh, that your heart desires, what would it be? Hmm. <laughs> See, I'm sort of pulled in two directions. That's fair, because that's what's a course or courses <laughs> or learning. Oh, right? yeah, it's a course or yeah. course. Yeah. So there's definitely, I would definitely love to do a course that's sort of about, you know, like, social justice and social awareness and you know navigating you know anti-black racism anti-indigeneity um you know so many of these topics that are so important in education so i would love to design a course for students you know in school um to sort of get them you know prepared to navigate and confront um you know these issues in the real world so that's something that i would really like to do the other I'm gonna thing. stop you there. What an interesting thing, because especially navigating it, I get it. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's say code switching, or who knows, any any number of ways of navigating anti-black racism, racism, anti-xenophobia, uh, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But confronting it, mm -hmm. like whoa, that's heavy stuff. Because a lot of times we confront these things in unexpected ways. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, or maybe we're on our own or just <laughs> you know what I mean that's that's they're they're the confrontation these moments of confrontation are are very difficult yeah exactly. so yeah and I feel like there's always that question of how do I confront it what's you know what is the way to approach or confront this depending on the on the situation what strategies can be used to make you know, make yourself feel, feel comfortable, because I think sometimes when we are presented with various forms of, you know, racism, various forms of is, isms, phobias, what have you, it's like, first of all, it's just managing yourself and how you might feel in, in that moment, whether it's something that's directed at you or at someone else that you recognize is wrong. And, you know, I know I always get, you know, internally, I get the shakes and I get angry and, and right, it's like, right, right. first I have to manage this, like manage my own emotions. And then now how do I address this if I want to, you know, in a way that hopefully will yield some sort of, you know, positive result or teaching moment or what have you. And I think with our students, especially, I'm sure they see, see this a lot online, um, you know, cause the comment section can be a dark place right, right, <laughs> in a, right, on a right. lot of platforms. So just sort of teaching them, you know, how to navigate those spaces, confront these things when you see it, manage your own emotions as far as how, um, you know, how you deal with these various forms of, you know, discrimination or, or even, you know, demonstrations of, of positivity, like, you know, just to not keep it so trauma informed. But yeah, I think something like that with students would be a worthwhile sort of exploration and, and you could get cool. some interesting coursework out of it. Nice, you realize that, you know, this is 100% possible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not being um, overly just dramatic and stuff. Like, for example, because that's why I said a course for learning. Now, just to, just to be quick, if you wanted to design a course mm -hmm. or design classes, you could present those to whatever school or administration, maybe as an after school kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Or an online kind of thing at first. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, uh, the way usually the ministry works, every school gets a number of IDC courses, which are kind of like independently written courses that are connected to a credit, at least in the high school level. Right. Right. Um, that's what I'm saying. There's so this, that idea, there, there are ways to bring it to students, mm -hmm. not necessarily like in the classroom in someone's timetable right away, but there are ways to bring it to students okay. like little by little. Uh, there's even, oh my God. There's that new black, I guess that's what it's, it's not, it's, I think it's a black history course. It's a new black history course that's being introduced in September 
by uh, some teachers at Meadowbrook, I believe, okay. in the TDSB, and then some other um, schools are picking it up. Okay. And the, the the teachers who developed it like received threats and a lot of harassment, and it's in the paper, it's in the Toronto Star. But that's kind of cool. But I was like, uh, it's a it's a grade twelve university course. Okay. And my only thought was like, wait a second, that's kind of at the end of the line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What about the grade six kids and you know the grade nines and all that stuff? Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah. So I would keep that in mind. Like, there's no, there should be nothing stopping you from writing your ideas down, and you can bring them into, you can you can bring them into schools or you can you can put them out there. You don't have to like, doesn't have to be a dream. <laughs> you can, you put them can, in my yeah. notebook and file them away. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where's my, where's my, where's my, where's my nice dream? Like LeBron, he brought Space Jam to, <laughs> Space Jam to life. Anyway, um, yeah, 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 that's, that's it. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. No, that's cool. That's cool. This has been fun. So if you have any other questions, fire away. <laughs> oh, we'll do this again. <laughs> even even before the end of the summer cool okay. yes yeah yeah okay thank you so much leander grant well, thank you and um yeah this is the this is the first one-on-one -on -one, record school one-on-one -on -one. i have another one scheduled tomorrow actually with adrian hales and we're going to talk about art and also fatherhood and father's day Aww, because that's one of that's another area that i'm trying to approach more and more with you know in more depth mm -hmm. is the area, area of fatherhood and especially like fatherhood and hip hop culture and stuff in our culture. Any comments on it? Um, just that I think that that's a great, uh, a great topic to be, um, you know, exploring um, fatherhood. I think the role of fathers is something that we don't explore to the same degree as like the role of mothers. Mm -hmm. in, uh, just in the content that's put out there and the discussions that we have in the world and I think the role of fathers when we do talk about it it's more in like a material sense so it's like your dad's job to keep the lights on in the house right. and work and you know be the the disciplinarian and stuff but we don't necessarily talk about like the emotional work of being a father and I think that that's something that's really important um and that we should talk about more and celebrate more so I uh, I'm excited for your interview and thank you uh, I'll send you I've actually been doing weekly videos on lessons that I'm learning as a father. Um, so they're not, it's not advice. It's not based on advice, it's based on lesson. So this week, I forgot what it was, <laughs> but it's on, it's on records with my daughters, my Instagram. The week before was piano lessons. And the lesson that I learned was I have to, I gotta take it easy. Mm. <laughs> I gotta take it easy. I'm like, yo, we're, we're gonna make daily lessons you know, we're going to stick to it. But the lesson I learned, my wife was like, you got to let Dominique be a kid. Otherwise, you're going to take the fun out of it. Okay. So if I can offer some perspective as well. Please, yeah. The daughter of a father who was the, uh, the guide behind my musical lessons as a child. I will definitely agree. Well, I think as a kid, you're always, you want to be a kid. You want to play. You want to, yeah. you know, practice doesn't look like fun at that right. age. Right. I will say that now I'm so glad that my dad was the person that he was and made me practice every day and oh, see, I gotta do that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now there is a time and place where you need to know when to be soft and when to relax and you know all of that but mm -hmm. I will say that I have had so many stories from people who are like yeah I started playing piano my parents never made me continue with it so I didn't and now I regret it and mine did, particularly my dad. And there are so many more lessons other than just knowing how to play piano that came out of that. So oh, I thank you. Thank you for that. And as we open up, feel free to come by and help do a little bit. Of <laughs> when you taught, when you practice every day, what, what held were you? Because Dominique is six right now. Yeah, I wasn't much older, seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it was I'm half an hour every day. I'm going to tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> Leandra had to practice every day. Thank you for that perspective. Every day. <laughs> for that perspective. And it's also me. Sometimes I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. And that's okay. You're tired. And if she's tired too, then, you know, let her be tired. But it's like, all right, we take today off, but tomorrow we're back at it again. All right. That's great. And also make sure you make her listen to cool people who play. She, oh, yeah, she does. She, she's, she's surrounded by a lot of cool music. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Leandra. No problem.
Thank you. Say hi to the family. Have a great day. Great week. We'll talk soon. You too. Say hi to your daughters and your wife and great. enjoy the weather. Enjoy the weekend. All that good stuff. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.